Okay, so um, you have seen me around campus with my dog, Tony Stark. Uh, he is my service dog. He became into my service about um, a year and a half ago, um, more, more like two years. It was right after the pandemic. Um, before that, I usually was accompanied by my daughter and by my son. Um, my son and I went to school together, actually. I owe him my degree. And then uh, my daughter, um, she accompanied me when I started working here as an adjunct. Uh, but my daughter grew up and, um, you know, she uh, became a student at VCU and um, I uh, needed to have companions. So, um, so Tony came into my service. So he is my service dog. So I put together this presentation just to give you an idea of what a service dog is and, um, and what it means to have a service dog. So a service dog is an animal that performs a specific task uh, that helps a person with disability or special needs. A service dog is different from a therapy dog and an emotional support dog. If you look in here at the picture, I put some pictures uh, with the different slides. Uh, this picture is at the Needle in Seattle, and we are several stories high, and the floor is glass, and you can see uh, that Tony Stark um, is um, standing in there, very relaxed. Um, he was actually sitting um, while we were standing in there, uh, the whole family with us. Um, a service dog is a trained dog that behaves in an exemplary way. Um, he is in most situations. He can go to supermarkets, doctor's office, escalators, restaurants, airplanes, and uh, even at the zoo. An emotional support dog is usually not trained um, or, and, um, and is allowed to bark, um, is allowed to sniff food, jump on people and other behaviors, including even growling, uh, barking, the, and this keeps him away from being allowed in most places. So you cannot take an emotional support dog any, uh, anywhere in public. Uh, a therapy dog um, is usually this happy-go-lucky dog that loves the attention from everyone around and will behave just like an emotional support dog, maybe with the exception of growling because it's a happy-go-lucky dog, uh, but it's not allowed in most places either. Um, so here's more uh, differences between service dogs and emotional support dogs and therapy dogs, for example. Um, if you, um, if you have um, a service dog, as you can see, it can accompany the owner and anywhere in public, uh, wherever people are allowed, the service dog is allowed. Um, it can live with the owner at no expense um, if, if there's like a no pet policy. Um, it can accompany the owner in an airplane with uh, no additional fee. Um, it and usually can tolerate a variety of environments, experiences, and people, and is recognized under the American Disabilities Act. Um, an emotional support dog, um, the only thing that is allowed to do is to live with the owner if there is a no pet policy, um, because um, an emotional support dog is a dog that, um, that just um, uh, his presence um, um, helps the person uh, emotionally. So um, because of lack of training, um, it's not really allowed anywhere. Um, and, um, and then you have the therapy animal. Those are the animals that you see, like uh, they come to hospitals to see people, they come to uh, convalescent centers, to nursing homes. Um, they can tolerate a variety of environment and that's pretty much what they are. They're not allowed to uh, live with the owner if there's no pet policy, um, they cannot accompany the owner anywhere. Okay, so uh, here's here's one of uh, the main questions that I get asked when I'm out with my dog. Um, what, is, what is a service dog? How do you get a service dog? Well, you can get a service dog um, like I did from um, a, um, a place that provide service dogs for people. They have, they work on a grant and, uh, 
and they, um, you know, and they, and they are need based on the need of the person. Um, so you can get a, a, a service dog like that, or you can buy a service dog for um, a lot of money, like uh, a, a service dog range between $15,000 and $30,000. Um, or you can uh, get your own puppy and train him or take him for training. Uh, but the thing is that not just any puppy that you buy is, is going to be a good service dog. Service dogs are kind of like, um, I cannot say that they're born uh, to be service dogs. Uh, but just to have an idea of, of, of what you're looking for if you decide to buy a puppy to become your service dog, um, these. Um, you know, things that are not good uh, for a service dog are very social dogs. When, when you find, when you go to pick a puppy and you find this puppy that just comes to you and is licking you everywhere and jumping on you, uh, that will probably not make a good service dog. Um, they, they need attention um, and then um, constantly from strangers. And um, it is very difficult for them to ignore people around them. So it makes it hard for them to concentrate on a task. Working dogs. Working dogs are like German Shepherds. Um, you know, those, those dogs that are, that are used for sniffing, for protection, things like that. Um, they're usually very active and carry a lot of anxiety with them. Uh, so they have been bred with a lot of energy and will find it very hard to lay around in the office or under a table at a restaurant. Um, guard dogs. Guard dogs usually view strangers as potential threats. Therefore, they might find it difficult to relax where there's a lot of people around. Um, and then independent dogs, if, if, the, if a dog is independent, he's not going to be looking at you and looking for clues on, on what's going on with you. So, um, so you don't really want an independent dog as a service dog. Um, what is a puppy, you know, what is a puppy uh, that is going to become a service dog look like? Well, um, the first thing to see is, is any sign of anxiety. If, if the puppy is like uh, moving around and, and very anxious and, you know, going everywhere, um, that's, that's not going to make a good service dog. Um, um, one thing that you can do is that you can ask to see the puppy in an unfamiliar place. So if, you, if you're going to buy a puppy, you can say, well, can you meet me at the park or can you meet me um, at this uh, bus stop where there's going to be a lot of people and see how they act, how the dog will act in there. Um, ev evaluate how quickly the dog wants to interact with you. So, so a, a potential service dog is the puppy that all the puppies come out and they all like kind of playing and, and want to lick you and all that. But then there's this one that is sitting over there just observing, looking around and seeing what is going on. And yes, he will come to you, but he has reservations. Um, that's, that's a good service dog. Uh, watch the dog interaction with like different objects, like an umbrella, a shopping cart, a loud noise toy. Uh, drop something next to the dog and see what happens. Is the dog going to run away with the tail between his legs? Uh, most likely would not make a good service, service dog. And then also they check um, how a dog will react to, to a treat. If you have a treat in your hand and you give it to the dog, the dog smells it and you kind of take it away and you hide it in your pocket, see what the dog would do to go through that tree, like like is he going to follow the tree? Um, is he going to try to um, do a little bit more to get the tree? If the dog is like, oh yeah, whatever, she has a tree, I, I don't care, you know, um, that might be hard to train. So Jackie, yep. Um, where is Tony Stark in this picture? <laughs> Tony Stark is in his bed in my office. No, oh, uh, I mean, I mean, in the picture be. on the PowerPoint. Oh, oh, I was going to get to that. <laughs> he, oh, okay, okay. I was going to say since he's wearing a raincoat. Uh, Tony Stark is uh, the maid of the mist uh, right there um, in the Niagara Falls. 
So yes, he wore a raincoat because if not, he will get completely wet. Okay, so what kind of training do service dogs need? Um, so service dogs, um, they uh, have a task training. This is a specific task that the dog will perform. Um, so they can give a person a pressure therapy. Uh, that's one of the things that Tony would do for me. Uh, he would alert me of a, an imminent panic attack um, that can cause me to faint and have a seizure. Um, he um, um, can also help by um, pressing, well, he doesn't press any buttons, but they can help pressing a button, opening a door. Um, you know, usually service dogs um, pass this part because it's very easy to train a dog to do a task. Um, um, another thing that Tony does is like, if I leave my phone, if he sees me putting my phone down and leave the room, uh, Tony will kind of lay down or want to go back to that room and uh, and um, for me to retrieve my phone because I usually leave my phone everywhere and forget about it. <laughs> um, uh, so, but these, these are things that are very easy to train a dog to do. Public access is the hardest part. Public access is, um, is uh, what a dog has to do when he goes out in public. So, Think of all the things that you encounter in your everyday life and now realize that the dog must behave through all of it. Um, a service dog uh, needs to um, not react to like bathroom equipment, different floorings, going up on an elevator, going up on an escalator, a kid that's running, a kid on a bike, another dog barking, a cheetah at the zoo. Um, you know, all, all these things the dog needs to be able to, um, to behave through. So this is the part when a potential service dog will fail. Sometimes they, um, the people that train these dogs, uh, they go and they pick a puppy that is five months old. Five months is more or less when, they, when the dog starts showing, um, you know, um, a temperament and the ability to be a service dog. So that's uh, pretty much when they purchase these dogs or they get it donated. And, um, and so, so the dog starts the training and everything is going well, but he cannot uh, get used to different floorings. Um, and if he cannot get used to different floorings, then he cannot be a service dog because a service dog is supposed to give the person freedom um, and the ability to uh, go to places that are, um, you know, that are um, restricted to them. So if the dog doesn't like a shiny floor and, and cannot pass that, then, uh, then that's the big problem. Um, before I finish, I want to, um, tell you what happened um, with Tony at Ikea, but let me finish my presentation and then I'll, I'll share that with you. Okay, so what does then, what an identification does a service dog need? A service dog does not need identification. A service dog behavior is their identification. A service dog does not even require to wear a vest. Um, as you can see, here's Tony. Um, on the left picture is he's at uh, in Disney World. He's riding. Uh, it's a small world with me, and uh, and he's like looking at all the things, just like if he was a two-year-old kid. And then on the right, he is at the Richmond Zoo, and you can see that he's uh, completely comfortable uh, with the giraffe at the at the zoo, even though he had never gone to a zoo before. Um, what um, service dogs are protected by the ADA. So establishment can ask uh, questions about a service dog and there's only two questions that they can ask. Uh, one question is, is this a service dog? And the other question is, what task does it perform? It cannot ask me to uh, show him uh, to, to have my dog perform something. It cannot ask me what kind of disability I have, even though my disability is on, on Tony's vest, uh, but um, it cannot ask me um, anything like that. Um, it's only those two questions. Actually, we have gone to very few places that have asked us about 
the service dog and the and the people have pulled the card out and say, is this a service dog? And then what task does it perform? Okay, there are laws against harassing or interfering with a service dog. And there's also laws against misrepresenting or impersonating a service dog. Different states have different laws that carry convictions from misdemeanors to felonies uh, from har for harassing or misrepresenting a service dog. So, so um, you know, getting getting any dog and putting a service dog vest on it and uh, trying to go into a restaurant um, can can cause a person to uh, to go to jail or to have a, a big fine, depending on that different state. Okay, what is harassing a service dog? <laughs> so, um, you know, this is, um, Tony Tony loves to wear glasses and um, sometimes he will be looking out the window in the car with glasses on. So, uh, so my kids usually put the glasses on him. Uh, so what is harassing a service dog? Touching, staring, talking, taking pictures, asking to pet, um, calling to you, making kissy noises, like, you know, um, all those things are considered harassment because uh, when, when, uh, when somebody is calling the dog, uh, they, it's taking their concentration, concentration away and he cannot read what is going on with me. So it's impeding his performance, uh, which it can endanger me. Uh, if Tony doesn't realize that I'm about to have a panic attack and that I'm about to faint, he cannot tell me um, that I need to sit down on the floor and uh, and um, and that can endanger me. Uh, it can make me fall and, and have um, an accident. Um, so uh, uh, there's a big problem with fake service dogs. Uh, fake service dogs are, are usually unruly, untrained, dog aggressive dogs that people are taking to places and they're interfering with the work of real service dogs. Uh, fake service dogs give people also the idea that anybody can touch a service dog and that, um, you know, and that a service dog can be messed with. Here is a website um, that promotes uh, fake service dogs and there is several of them. This website looks uh, completely legit. It's called USA Service Dog Registration. And as you can see, they sell you a service dog ID card, a difficult uh, digital certificate, a tag. And the fact is that a service dog does not need any of that. A service dog just needs to be a real service dog. And, you know, as a final note, always think of a service dog as a wheelchair. It allows the disabled person to um, um, go through everyday life activities that otherwise are, are restricted to them. So, um, you know, asking to pet a service dog or asking to talk to a service dog is almost like asking somebody, hey, uh, do you mind if I sit on your wheelchair for a little bit? Um, you know, because because he is like a like a medical thing for me, and uh, you know you can see him right here on the left. He's uh, looking at a cheetah at the at the zoo. Um, in the middle, he's riding the Skyliner at Disney World, and on the right, he is. Uh, we are at the mountains in Maine, and I was um, that was a trip that I took through in the summer. It was the first trip I ever took by myself uh, and Tony was um, um, was who made that possible for me um, so um, and then I have at the end of the presentation I have um, you know some places that I took some information from to make this presentation um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take this off and and answer questions uh, and I'm also going to um, tell you what happened to Tony at Ikea. Um, uh, because um, when a dog is trained to be a service dog, um, there's, it, it is not possible to be able to, um, to foresee um, 
all the different situations that, uh, that you will encounter uh, in your everyday life. So I was at Ikea with Tony and all of a sudden Tony just dropped on the floor and he was saying, I am not going through there. I am not passing through and, and that's it. I'm not moving. And it was, uh, I was very glad that my son was with me and my son was able to pick up Tony <laughs> from the floor and walk through. And then we realized that Tony, um, is afraid of leather. Um, you know, uh, at Ikea, they have cow hides, uh, um, pieces of, of carpet and, uh, you know, like, like rugs that are cow hide. And Tony is very much afraid of that. We don't know why, uh, but, uh, but that is a big deal. So of course, um, as soon as something like that happens, Tony goes back to his trainers who uh, will give him support for the rest of his life with me. And, um, and um, they have uh, tried to make him uh, a little bit more tolerable towards leather, but he's still um, not too sure about it. Uh, so I recently got a leather jacket and I had to return it because it was a big no-no. Tony was not going to be comfortable with me wearing a leather jacket. Uh, we have no idea why um, he's so afraid of uh, leather, but he is, and uh, especially of cow hide and uh, any animal hide. Um, so um, uh, one thing that I want to uh, say is, um, you know, uh, I'm glad that everybody has welcomed Tony into RCC and that, uh, I've uh, been given this opportunity to be able to work with him. Do you have any questions for me? Yes, Tony is an animal lover. Yes, he is uh, very much um, uh, very, very good with any other animals. Um, I do not let him get it, get, um, get near any dog. When people are walking their dogs, they, they usually say to me things like, oh, is he friendly? And I said, no, no, I'm sorry. No, you cannot bring your dog in uh, because I'm protecting Tony and I'm protecting myself. Uh, you never know what a dog would do uh, to Tony or to me or what Tony would do in that situation. Uh, one of the things that we can never forget is that Tony is, in fact, a dog. He does not understand uh, reasoning. Uh, so, um, so, you know, uh, to protect myself and Tony, I do not let anybody pet him. Um, I usually say, no, I'm sorry, I, um, you cannot pet my dog. Um, you know, things like that, because you just never know when the dog is going to say, I don't like that person. 